Welcome back everybody and welcome to Boomer's Playground. Today we're going to be going over exercise 16 in the Colt Steel Web Developer Bootcamp. So today um, this is just the second one. Um, our first one was pretty basic just kind of creating variables and then this one is going to go over um, more about the differences. So if you guys watched the previous video, well, I guess I won't even do this. Um, and yes, yeah, so I'll, I see you guys had a constant var video there. Um, so in the previous video, when we searched, we saw we had these, you know, couple these three options for for technically how to create a variable in JavaScript. And so this is just going more over the differences between them. And you'll frequently hear me say, "Oh, you guys just watched this video," and it's because I watched this series like five or more years ago. So um, I don't feel like I actually took it because it's changed so much, but I just don't remember where everything was. So, all right, so here's our first one. We're gonna deal with um, constants. And uh, this is one of the few times um, I'm very, very big on um, getting on people who are like, oh man, I can't remember everything. And like, I can't harp enough that memorization is not the goal when you're learning to code. Obviously, there's going to come a point when you remember when you memorize certain things, but the end goal is not to memorize. So if you're going through this course um, and you get to this exercise, I feel like this is something you should know. But seeing as maybe you just watched the video, maybe you had a nap, maybe you took a walk, you had responsibilities, kids, wife, husband, whatever. Um, maybe you forgot it. So um, so we're going to do this. So they want us to get some practice defining constants blah, 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 and yeah, sorry, it looks like we already did it there. So just ignore what you saw previous. And um, he's just telling you to define this, to define a second one. And then he's also letting you know that he really can't test for const or let. Um, and a lot of times with tests, you really can't do that. Um, he probably could have checked if you could change it, uh, but I, that's kind of, you probably actually couldn't with this. Um, with the coding suite that Udemy uses, I guess it's pretty not great, I guess. <laughs> so, um, all right, so let's do this. So to find a constant called boiling point. So, you know, he says all this here. Um, I'm hoping you guys remember it, but let's assume you didn't. Again, like I said, I'm trying to do these as if um, you're a brand new person. And I'm just like training you at, at, on the job at my at work. So um, how to, uh, what was it? Uh, yeah, how to define const JS. Okay, so we can just go to the MDN docs, and this is another thing. Um, so MDN docs and JavaScript, or sorry, uh, W3 schools. So in one of the earlier videos, Colt says that to stay away from W3 schools. And at the time of, the, so I do remember that video. So that was from the old course, which again was, you know, I did it five years ago. He probably recorded it years before that. So we're probably talking, you know, coming up shy of 10 years for how long he recorded that video. And W3 schools used to not be very good. Um, they used to have bad information. Um, and I don't know that this is true, but I've read articles that say that people who created the first one use this W3 school strictly for the fact that um, W3 is the name of the web um, consortium. So the World Wide Web Consortium. Consortium. <laughs> so I don't know if that's true or not, but I read an article about that. And um, so for a long time, um, these weren't very good. They actually are good now. I have not run into any that had misinformation on them. So I know a lot of people at the beginning will want to um, use the W3 schools because they are a little bit easier to read. Um, these look like they were made for somebody learning compared to the MDN docs where um, for this one, it's it's not as obvious, but you know, I mean, even just like down here, you know, you look at this and you're like, what the heck? So MDN writes their docs, um, engineers are writing them and they're writing them for engineers. So it's cool if you don't like MDN, but here's what I would challenge you to do because once you get into like actual like um, like tough problems, you will get far more information out of these MDN docs than you will W3 schools. Now, again, at the beginning, I get it. 
So here's what I challenge you to do if you're using W3 schools for your documentation, which, and again, that is 1 million percent fine. So we're going to go over this. So JavaScript const, const is a keyword. It was brought in with ES6. Um, if you create a const, it can't be redeclared. It can't be redefined or sorry, reassigned. And they're defined within the block scope. So this stuff don't, um, this one right here, the block scope, don't worry too much about it right now. Um, you'll get into it a little more. And this is just one of those things you kind of learn as you go along. It's really tough to teach this. Um, like the basics are really easy to teach, but it goes way, way deeper than that. So um, this one, you know, no, we can't reassign it and, um, you know, it can't be redeclared. So, all right, here's an example. All right, I mean, that's pretty simple. So um, let's go back here. So we have a const and it looks like we have the name there. So they want boiling point C and then they want it to be 100. And so um, to kind of reiterate this, so it can't be redeclared or reassigned. And I'm going to show you what that means in the console in a minute. But the reason you do something like this is it's when you want this value to never change. So there are some things that um, you, know, you don't want to assign a const to. So let's say you have a user profile and you have an age. That changes every year, so const wouldn't make a lot of sense for that. But something like the boiling point of C, like this will likely never change, or at least probably won't ever change in our lifetime. So const makes a lot of sense. And so then we have another one, which is the boiling point for Fahrenheit. So we do boiling point Fahrenheit, and we'll set it to 212. And this is just the exact same thing. The boiling point for, for Fahrenheit likely will not change. And in the rare occasion that it does, um, you know, it probably won't be in our lifetime. So um, let's check the solution, see if it worked. Okay, perfect. So that did satisfy the test. So um, here's what I challenge you to do. So if you use W3 schools to find the answer, again, that is ridiculously fine. Nothing wrong with that. But what I want you to do now is I want you to take and, you know, I have I have a big screen or if you have two screens um, or even if you can just like split your screen up in half, put W3 schools on one side and put MDN on the other and start reading through the, the MDN docs. I know this is an extra step and it kind of sucks, but I want you to start figuring out how to use MDN as your documentation tool, because, again, you're going to get to points where you need to know deeper down what these things do. And while W3 schools is a great high level view on a lot of things, they just don't dive that deep. So um, again, you know, do this as long as you have to, but I really think this could benefit you in the long run too. You know, okay, cool, found it here. All right, let's read through the, the MDN docs. Cause then what'll happen is you'll read some of this and some of this you still will have no idea what it means. And that's, that's perfectly fine as well. But you're gonna start drawing, you're gonna start connecting dots between the two. So you completely understand this one so you start drawing dots to the MDN one and you'll start to understand, you know, 10% of this. And then the next one you do, you'll understand 20%. And before you know it, MDN will be your go-to as far as docs are concerned. So um, awesome. So we satisfy that one. Um, here's uh, something that I wanted to show you guys in terms of the whole redeclaration and reassigning. So what they mean by that is so we have const a and we'll just do, you know, 10. So we can't redeclare it, which what that means is we say a equals 18. We'll get an error because it's const. And then I guess reassigning is kind of the same thing. But like, let's say you did, um, you know, you wanted to add one to it, right? Well, we can't because it's a constant. Um, you will get to this in the later lecture, so I won't go too far. Um, but I also don't want you guys to be, um, I don't want to say misinformation, but I don't want you guys to be spreading information that's not true. So you saw we had const a, and when, when you set it to a real value, like a number or a string or a Boolean, um, you can't reassign it or you can't add to it. But let's say we have an array or an object. So we'll do const b and we'll do const c, b is an array, um, c is an object. So we still can't reassign it. So we can't do B equals one, uh, one, two, three, four. We get that error because again, we're reassigning B to something, but we already set it equal to an empty array. And that's the exact same thing with C. So we, we couldn't do C 
um, you know, name reverse playground. We get an error with that. Um, but what we can do is with arrays and objects, because what happens is, um, and again, don't look too deep into this, and I, I feel bad saying it because I know, like for me, a lot of times I would go off and look into this stuff, but um, arrays and objects are passed by reference, not passed by value. So when you do 10, like it's just 10. 10 is what is assigned to A. If we did Boomer's Playground as a string, that would be what's actually assigned to A. Well, in these two instances, the memory location where these are, are located is what is given to B. So we can do b.push and we'll say boomer's playground. And a lot of people would think, oh, I can't do that because we, we set b to a constant, but we're not actually reassigning it. We're just adding to the array. So that array lives in memory somewhere. And so we can do this and now you'll see b has that in there. And that's the same with um, an object, right? So if you do object, you know, name, equals boomer's playground. You know, again, you would think like, oh, this shouldn't work, but it does because again, we're not reassigning, we're just kind of adding to. Um, so again, I don't I don't want you guys to get um, too caught up in this arrays and objects things. We'll go over those in the arrays and objects sections um, or of the coding exercises for those sections. But I just wanted you to know in case you're on the Discord or you're on a group and somebody's like, oh, you know, I created an array like this and I can't do anything with it. I don't want you to be like, oh, you can't do cons because with arrays and objects, you really can. But again, don't get too much into it. Um, so that'll be it. Uh, so that's it for exercise 16. I hope you guys learned something. Um, questions, comments, concerns, leave them in the comment section below and I will catch you guys on the next exercise.